Hi, this is Rob Waller from Business Loan Services and welcome to my Friday Business Finance Bulletin, my weekly roundup of news, tips, ideas and strategies on raising finance and dealing with banks. So what's been in the news this week? Well, an interesting survey caught my eye from Bibby Financial Services. Now, they've been out and spoken to uh, owners of 500 micro businesses. These are the small end of the market. And they've been looking at the whole issue of succession planning. Now, the thing that came out of there, which was quite surprising, was that 26% of those micro business owners says at the end of their day, they have no plans to sell a business or hand it down to a family member or staff. So that means that 26% of micro businesses, and when the business owners retire, presumably, will just close. So what's that got to do with bank finance? Well, one of the key things that banks look at when lending to family owned businesses is succession planning. What's going to happen to the business at the end of your day? So when you're putting your plan together, make sure that you address this issue of succession. Make sure you've got a clear plan in place, preferably with names or roles of people um, that will take this business on. The other way of, of dealing with it, of course, is to make sure, if you've got a set retirement date in mind, that all your debts are paid off by the end of that period. Now, that may not be possible, so you're back to making sure you've got a clear succession plan in place. Another piece of news that caught my eye, um, the crowdfunding world and banks trying to work closer together. Uh, I've mentioned in previous videos how past banks and crowdfunding sites, you know, a little bit of tension. Um, and one of the areas of, of tension that has been there recently is the area of security. Now, it's quite often that if you're going to look for a secured loan, a bank may already have a charge on the property that you have. Now, whilst many crowdfunding sites will lend money on an unsecured basis or against the director's guarantee, um, more often than not, there are sites coming up now that will offer secured facilities. But the chances of you having a property that has no legal charge on it can be quite slim. And the criticism is that banks are just taking too long where a crowdfunding site wants to take a second charge on a piece of property. So what the banks have agreed through the British Bankers Association and those banks are with Barclays, Lloyds, HSBC and the Royal Bank of Scotland, they've agreed now to have a standard set of forms that the crowdfunding sites can immediately fill in. Um, and then they've all agreed that there'll be a seven working day turnaround to make sure that all necessary approvals are given to allow the crowdfunding site to take its second charge. So another example of how crowdfunding really is coming into mainstream. So another piece of news, I was sitting down with a business owner this week and we we're looking at doing an additional commercial mortgage request. Now they've already got a very large and substantial chunk of borrowing with one of the main high street banks. But in talking to them, it became clear that they were just a little bit nervous. You know, they'd heard all the stories, um, especially during the start of the credit crunch, how banks suddenly just closed all the facilities down. And they didn't want to be that exposed to one bank by borrowing another chunk of money from just one source. So what we've agreed to do, and we've started now, is to go and look for um, another alternative um, high street lender just to match the two off. So some of you to think about as well, if you've got all the proverbial eggs in one basket, how does that make you feel? Particularly if you've got some large, uh, very large borrowing requirements. So next time you're going ahead uh, and looking for more money, just think sometimes, is this an opportunity for us to diversify our banking risk? and just look for another partner bank. So at least you've got two sources in which to work against. So let's move on now to my tip of the week. We get referred to many business owners who've had a no from the bank. They come to us because they want us to try and turn that no into a yes or find alternative forms of finance for them. But the one thing that kind of puts them all together in one group is the mindset. They've got a mindset that it's been a fail. They failed in that project of raising the money that they need. But do you know what? Say it is a mindset thing. You haven't failed because here's why. Because fail really stands for a first attempt in learning. Yes, you may have had a no from your bank, but you've learned from the process. It's the same in all types of businesses and all walks of life. We may fail at something, but where the real um, benefit is, is reflecting on and saying, okay, what did I learn out of this process? So if you've had a no from the bank, my tip for you this week is go back to the bank if they haven't already told you and ask, why did you say no? What were the three, four, whatever it may be, key things that made you say no?
And armed with that knowledge, it means then you can uh, put a much more robust business plan and application together by including all of these areas that the banks are concerned about, or take that business plan, amend it, and go off and seek uh, the opinion of another lender. So don't assume that a fail is a fail. Just remember this, it really is a first attempt in learning. And that's my tip for you this week. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video. As ever, if you liked it, please hit that like button and share it on the social media as well. And thanks for that. And I look forward to being with you again next Friday afternoon when I've got more tips and ideas for you on raising finance and dealing with banks. See you next Friday.